Welcome everybody to Journey to Independence. We have a really exciting event today. So today we're diving into a much requested topic with the amazing Katie Sullivan. Before we get started, I wanted to introduce Katie properly with a brief bio. So Katie Sullivan is the founder of Parenting Doula, an early parenting and sleeping consulting business. She's a Montessorian and a mother of two. Over the nearly 20 years she's studied and worked with young children, both in and out of the classroom, she earned a master's degree in early childhood education, an AMS primary credential, and a postpartum doula certification. So welcome, Katie. And I'm just going to pin you so everybody can see. Welcome, Thank Katie. Thank you so much for the introduction. I'm honored to be here and excited to talk about floor beds. I think all parents should have access to information about floor beds and sleep from birth. It's a huge, huge topic that is not nearly as accessible as it should be. So I first started being interested in floor beds when I was pregnant with my first, who's now four, and I did not have a lot of resources on the topic. So I used material from Maria Montessori and from Montessori from the start, Lillard's book, and just kind of gave it a try. <laughs> and I, I love the cats trying to be in the conversation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's always close by. <laughs> of course. So tell us a little bit more about your journey and then how did you then get into doing this on a professional level? So I just loved the floor bed. I found it was really helpful when my daughter was little, it was helpful. I could put her to sleep and then I didn't have to transfer, you know, from my arms to the bed. I could easily nurse when she was still eating at night. And then there's no transition from the floor bed to a bed because she's already in the bed. So as she got older, she's in the same bed, it's just got a little bit higher. There, there are no, so many reasons I love it. And I ended up doing it the same thing for my second child. I think everybody should have information about floor beds, whether or not it's right for your family is really for you to decide. But I think it's um, a topic that not enough people know about. Yeah, so that's Absolutely. why we're here today. Yeah, awesome. We were just talking about that, how there is such a lack of information when it comes to sleeping and especially when it comes to the floor bed. So can you tell us what, so for people who don't know what a Montessori floor bed is, can you explain to us what it is and why Maria Montessori recommended them to start with? Absolutely. So a floor bed is yeah. basically a bed huh? on the floor. It's just a mattress on the floor or a mattress with a, a frame that's on the floor. And Maria Montessori recommended them for a couple of reasons. The main reason that Dr. Montessori liked the floor bed is because she really disliked the crib. She really thought children were, she said being made to sleep. I mean, I don't think you can actually make a child sleep, but clearly children are being made to stay in the crib when they were ready to get up or they weren't being loud in the crib when they were ready to sleep. So this kind of gives the child more autonomy and she thought that children should be able to sleep when they were tired and get up when they were ready so that they could kind of regulate their own sleep and another big reason is she actually didn't speak a whole lot about floor beds but a big a big component of Montessori theory is the concept of giving children independence and Montessori really observed that when children have independence and when they're being taught uh, age-appropriate skills, they're a lot happier and calmer, and it really supports their building of self-esteem. So these are all support the floor bed, is that it really supports the independence and it supports children being able to get in and out themselves and regulate their own sleep a little bit. Great. And um, when can we start using a floor bed? Is it based on age or is it based on development? This is a really big question. So just generally, and then we'll go into the finer details. Mm -hmm. So traditionally, a floor bed was recommended instead of a crib. So at birth, a baby would be in a bassinet or Moses basket, basically a small 
baby size bed and then as they grew out of it they moved to a mattress a typically twin size mattress so that usually occurs around three or four months which I don't know if it's coincidence or not but it kind of coincides with a lot of developmental changes and babies at that age start to roll and need more space and sleep better when they have a little more space. So it all works out really well to transition babies right around that three or four months from the bassinet to the mattress. Although I have heard some people have used it from birth or from six weeks. That is less common, but certainly possible. When you're thinking about though transitioning from that bassinet to a floor bed, can you explain, like, so you said developmentally at around that three or four months, you know, there's this stage of development that's going on. Can you explain to people that are listening, what does that look like? Or what are the signs or what are the things that people should observe in their babies that they would be able to do so that they might see that they're ready for that transition? Because obviously we'll go into safe sleep practices later on because every country has their own ideals on safe sleep and things like that. But as a parent or a caregiver, what advice would you give on what to look for when your baby is ready or showing those signs? What should they look out for? Mm -hmm. So often parents call this the four-month regression. You hear that a lot from parents like, oh, my baby, they've been sleeping eight hours and all of a sudden they're up every hour. This is often when babies are sharing rooms with parents and there's a developmental shift to where they're becoming more social. They can see a lot further. They also are developing an awareness of their environment. So if you're starting to see those things, if your baby is um, all of a sudden waking up a lot more after sleeping for a longer time that can be a sign that they're ready for their a bigger space or their own space we had a question from gloria saying is three to four months too early to do the transition i've seen some recommendations that's five plus months um do you have any thoughts on that i think three personally this is personally i think three months is a great age to transition your baby because around four months during that I don't like to call it a regression it's more of a sleep maturation where babies also at that age their sleep patterns start to resemble adult sleep patterns and so if you transition them before that development happens they start to have the awareness of the environment that develops when they're in their bed and their space so As the awareness develops, also the awareness of their environment develops. And it's a lot harder when they are used to a certain environment, when they develop that awareness and they're sleeping, say, in a crib or in with their parents. And then all of a sudden you move them to another bed. It's a lot more of a transition. Right. And we're definitely going to get into that because I do see um, a few questions in the chat about older children and transitioning, but we'll, I will definitely get to those questions. So thanks guys, just pop them in there and um, we'll get to that. But I wanted to talk, um, so we've spoken about when's a great time to transition. Um, at the tricky question that we get a lot is, are floor beds safe? So can you discuss floor beds and using them safely? Yeah, so there are two things that are really important when you're choosing a floor bed. One is safe sleep practices, evidence-based safe sleep practices, and the other is childproofing. So for safe sleep, you don't want any, if your child's a baby under 12 months, you want don't want any loose blankets or sheets. You don't want pillows or stuffed animals. You don't want anything loose in the bed. You just want a tight fitted sheet. And you always want to place them on their back when you lie them down. I think those are probably the two most, most important evidence-based safe sleep practices. And then for childproofing, I think one of the most important things that people don't always consider is making sure all furniture is attached to the wall. That is huge for me because you may not think of it when your baby is small and they're not mobile, but before you know it, they will be. <laughs> and they Anything with drawers, they'll start to climb and pull and those need to be attached to the wall. And then the second thing is cords. 
So cords should be secured to the wall or behind furniture. Those are my biggest things. I know a lot of parents are concerned about outlets. I mean, of course, cover your outlets, but outlets in and of themselves are not that dangerous unless your child like shoves a metal object in one. So yes, definitely cover the outlets, but the primary child-proofing recommendations are secure your furniture and secure your cords. I was going to say, and that includes cords for like blinds, a lot of curtains or blinds, people, just for everyone that's listening out there, those are things that go unnoticed sometimes. So that's also a big one too, not just electrical cords. Absolutely. Yeah. You can get a little hook or something and put it high up and just wind up the cord. That's a good point. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to say a lot, a lot of people um, mention, and it's mentioned in the chat as well, um, they're concerned about the baby rolling off the bed. Um, this is not inherently dangerous. It's also, it's much more hazardous for them to fall from a crib than it is for them to fall from a floor bed because a floor bed generally is recommended four to six inches off the ground. And you generally put a, a thicker rug or something around the edge of the bed. So when they roll, some babies don't even wake up. They <laughs> just roll off and they sleep on the floor. Some babies do wake up and then they're a little startled and they cry for a minute and they fall back asleep. It's not a hazard. Okay, so let's look at some of the questions that have come through about older children. So Christine was saying, is trying to start at 14 months not recommended? We have co-slept, but we're looking to get him into his own room and to a floor bed. So yes, of course, you can transition your baby to their own room and their own bed at any age. Um, there are different things to consider when you have a toddler. A toddler going to their own room will definitely take a bit more of a structured plan. I think ultimately it'll be more work up front, but in, in the long run, your child will likely sleep better and you will likely sleep better as well. So with a 14 month old, Katie, what would you say? You said you mentioned that there should be like a structured routine and stuff. Can you explain to us what that would look like? Or if you do have an old, Flora was saying my baby's two years old. Is it too late? No, it's not too late at any age. It might be a bit more of a structure around it. Can you explain what that looks like? Yeah, so anytime you're making a big change in your child's routine, I find it generally works best when you pre-consider and you make a plan. And if the child is old enough, like three or four, involve them in making the plan. And the other thing I always recommend to families is write it down, write down the plan. So in the middle of the night, when your baby's waking up and you're half asleep and you're trying to transfer them to their own bed. Of course, it's easier just to let them crawl in with you, but you're like, okay, no, let's stick with the plan. So make a plan, write it down, stick with it, <laughs> and really decide on your boundaries. And then some families like to do this more gradually. So maybe they start with putting the child to sleep in their room, but then letting them come in the night if they come in. Or some parents choose to sleep in the child's room on the bed for a while and then transition away from that. Uh, other families like to just start from where they want to be. So they create that boundary from the start and it can be a little bit hard to stick with it. But again, if you have a plan, it's written down and you're consistent. It's generally a pretty quick transition because children are very quick learners and very capable. And also if they know we are trusting them, they tend to live up to that trust and they tend to live up to, you know, the, the capabilities that we know they can have. I think that's a really great point when you said like when you actually trust them and see them as capable and confident. I think a lot of the issues that come up when it comes to any kind of big transition like sleeping in their own bed or transitioning to a floor bed is that we don't believe that they can do it and we don't see them as being capable. So that's a really good point. And being consistent is something that's really important. And we see that in everything. If we're going to be putting healthy boundaries in, no matter what the topic is, it's about that consistency so that the child then has a certain structure 
to thrive in. You know, the biggest problem we have sometimes is that um, the child will see this inconsistency and then be like, oh, well, I don't know if I'm coming or going or what's going on. And that really then disrupts the whole process of helping them to be independent. We had a great comment from Mariah saying, um, just here to say that my baby is 11 months and we co-sleep on a floor bed and love it. I'm yeah. starting to roll away and sleep on my own for a few hours each night. And the transition has been good so far. And that's fantastic because it's really about, and you mentioned this before, Katie, about finding something that's going to work for you and your family. There's no one stop shop. This is going to work for everybody. Um, so yeah, I, um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. And there are some more questions coming through. So we're going to take some of those now and then we'll continue our conversation. So Nicole was saying, does sleeping on a floor bed promote children to stay up late and not get a good sleep? How do you ensure that they get enough sleep in the night? So it doesn't really cause them to stay up later than any other bed would. I think the most important thing in ensuring your child gets enough sleep is putting them to bed on the earlier side when before they're overtired is a big one. And the second thing is to have a really steady routine uh, with a lot of sleep cues so that they know that it's going to be the same every day. And also when you are starting a new transition, a lot of parents, they'll say, oh, I've tried everything and nothing works. So they may have tried a lot of things, but often it's maybe for a day or two. And generally for the first day or two those are the hardest days <laughs> when there's a new big transition especially for toddlers the first few days are the hardest because they are learning something new they're figuring it out so they really need your support and not in saying oh no this isn't working but yes, you got it. I know last night was hard, but we'll keep practicing. It'll be easier tonight. We can do this, you know, really give them that support. Um, yeah, absolutely. All about positive encouragement and reassurance. And I guess if you feel confident in the child, they're going to feel confident as well. So it's about giving them that sense of belief and self-esteem. And Susan was saying toddlers up and roaming around at night or not putting herself to sleep, obviously having those strong routines, as you mentioned, to really help the child go to sleep from the start and having those high physical activities before during the day and making sure they have all that so they are ready for sleep is important. Must the parents put the child to sleep? Any opinions on that, Katie? So I'm not super clear on the question. Is yeah. that put them to sleep at bedtime or put them to sleep when they're up roaming around? I do think parents should be involved in bedtime. In terms of in the night, I would say this depends on family to family, you decide that boundary and stick with it. So if the boundary is the child needs to stay in their room, then if they go out of their room, you walk them back to their room. Uh, and generally for my own children, I have the limit, the light stays off, they stay in their room. And my children were little, there were times when I say little, they're two and four, but when they were littler, there were times when they would fall asleep with a basket of books everywhere, or they weren't quite ready to sleep. So they went and uh, pulled all the clothes out of the dresser and then fell asleep over there. Um, you know, but that it passes because children, um, inherently need their sleep and they biologically know how to sleep. We just kind of have to let them do it. 